today on the anniversary of 9-11, uh, I'll use the uh, Mass for the Preservation of Peace and Justice. Give peace, O Lord, to those who wait for you. Hear the prayers of your servants and guide us in the way of justice. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, and the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Brethren, let us acknowledge our sins, and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. Lord Jesus, you are mighty God and Prince of Peace. Lord, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you are Son of God and Son of Mary. Christ, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you are Word made flesh and splendor of the Father. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Let us pray. O oh God, who have revealed that peacemakers are to be called your children, grant, we pray, that we may work without ceasing to establish that justice which alone ensures true and lasting peace. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. A reading from the first letter of St. Paul to the Corinthians. Brothers and sisters, if I preach the gospel, this is no reason for me to boast, for an obligation has been imposed on me, and woe to me if I do not preach it. If I do so willingly, I have a recompense, but if unwillingly, then I have been entrusted with a stewardship. What then is my recompense? That when I preach, I offer the gospel free of charge, so as not to make full use of my right in the gospel. Although I am free in regard to all, I have made myself a slave to all so as to win over as many as possible. I have become all things to all, to save at least some. All this I do for the sake of the gospel, so that I may have a share in it. Do you not know that the runners in the stadium all run in the race, but only one wins the prize. Run so as to win. Every athlete exercises discipline in every way. They do it to win a perishable crown, but we an imperishable one. Thus, I do not run aimlessly. I do not fight as if I were shadow boxing. No, I drive my body and train it for fear that after having preached to others, I myself should be disqualified. The word of the Lord. How lovely is your dwelling place Lord, mighty God, how lovely is your dwelling place, Lord, mighty God. My soul yearns and pines for the courts of the Lord. My heart and my flesh cry out for the living God. 
How lovely is your dwelling place, Lord, mighty God. Even the sparrow finds a home, and the swallow a nest in which she puts her young. Your altars, O Lord of hosts, my King and my God. How lovely is your dwelling place, O mighty God. Blessed are they who dwell in your house. Constantly they praise you. Bless the men whose strength you are. Their hearts are set upon the pilgrimage. How lovely is your dwelling place, Lord, mighty God. For a sun and a shield is the Lord God. Grace and glory he bestows. The Lord withholds no good thing from those who walk in sincerity. How lovely is your dwelling place, Lord, mighty God. Alleluia, 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 Alleluia. Your word, O Lord, is truth. Consecrate us in the truth. Alleluia, Alleluia, Alleluia. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. Jesus told his disciples a parable. Can a blind person guide a blind person? will not both fall into a pit. No disciple is superior to the teacher, but when fully trained, every disciple will be like his teacher. Why do you notice the splinter in your brother's eye, but do not perceive the wooden beam in your own? How can you say to your brother, brother, let me remove that splinter in your eye? when you do not even notice the wooden beam in your own eye. You hypocrite, remove the wooden beam from your eye first, then you will see clearly to remove the splinter in your brother's eye. The Gospel of the Lord. So Jesus asks his disciples, can a blind person guide a blind person? And then we have our responsorial psalm, how lovely is your dwelling place, Lord, mighty God. The psalmist sees the beauty of the dwelling place of the Lord. In the Old Testament, of course, that beauty, the beauty of the temple, is a very tiny reflection of the Lord's own beauty. It helps us tap into the Lord's beauty. It's why we make churches as beautiful as we can and do all the things uh, tangibly that we can to make things beautiful in the liturgy so that we can see the beauty of the Lord. Uh, Jesus asked, can a blind person guide a blind person? All the guiding we want to do for those around us uh, is guiding them to the Lord certainly guiding them to see his beauty, which requires us to see his beauty so that we can talk about it, so we can uh, talk about how to experience it, how to pray your way into his beauty, how to live in such a way that it's a response to his beauty and it's, it's uh, replete, it's full with his beauty. We want to beg the Lord to help us uh, see his beauty more and more and more uh, each day and then beg him to help us lead others to see his beauty. It's that Lord of beauty who comes to us incarnate body, blood, soul, and divinity in the Eucharist. 
So we ask him to help us see his glory on this altar more so today than ever before. With great trust in our Lord's goodness and mercy, we bring to him our needs. For the church throughout the world, that God continue to bless, purify, and sanctify her in building his kingdom, we pray to the Lord. For those in public office, that God bless their efforts in defending the dignity and sanctity of life from conception through natural death, we pray to the Lord. For victims of violence, war, and hatred, that the Lord grant them healing and strength, we pray to the Lord. For those gathered here, that God, who is love, grow in us an ever greater spirit of compassion and love for one another, we pray to the Lord. For the faithful departed, in particular for today's Mass intention, Bernice Frankert, and for all of our faithful friends, family members, and parishioners who've gone before us, that they rejoice forever in the presence of God, we pray to the Lord. Father in heaven, we thank you for hearing our petitions. We ask that you use these prayers joined to the sacred heart of your Son in this Eucharist to accomplish your glory. All this we pray through Christ our Lord. For through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you, fruit of the earth and work of human hands. It will become for us the bread of life. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you, fruit of the vine and work of human hands. It will become our spiritual drink. Pray, brethren, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the saving sacrifice of your Son, the King of Peace, offered under sacramental signs that signify peace and unity, strengthen, we pray, O Lord, concord, among all your children, through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. 
It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Father most holy, through your beloved Son, Jesus Christ, your word through whom you made all things, whom you sent as our Savior and Redeemer, incarnate by the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin. Fulfilling your will and gaining for you a holy people, he stretched out his hands as he endured his passion so as to break the bonds of death and manifest the resurrection. And so with the angels and all the saints, we declare your glory as with one voice we acclaim, Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and, giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples saying, take this all of you and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, and Daniel, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. At the Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. 
Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, peace I leave you, my peace I give you, look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. Blessed are the peacemakers, for they shall be called children of God.
Let us pray. Bestow on us, we pray, O Lord, the spirit of charity, so that sustained by the body and blood of your only begotten Son, we may be effective in nurturing among all the peace that he has left us, who lives and reigns forever and ever. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Go forth, the Mass is ended. Saint Michael, the Archangel, defend us in battle. Be our protection against the wickedness and snares of the devil. May God rebuke him, we humbly pray. And do thou, O Prince of the heavenly host, by the power of God, cast into hell Satan and all evil spirits who prowl about the world seeking the ruin of souls. Amen.